This is the lab solution video for lab two, adding value with custom Docker images. We're gonna build on our knowledge from lab one, where we use Docker commands to run our first Docker containers. In this lab, we're gonna create a custom Docker image that's built from a Docker file. And we're gonna push that, our custom image to the central Docker Hub registry, where it can be pulled and deployed by other environments. As a prerequisite, make sure that you have Docker installed or optionally, you can go to playwithdocker.com as the fastest way to get started. Let's get started. Today, we're gonna to create a custom Docker image around a simple Python application. So the first thing you wanna do is create a app.py with uh, these contents. This is a simple Python application that uses Flask and it prints hello world at the root context. We're gonna run this application as a Docker container, but if you want, you can run it locally first. The requirements are that you need to have Python 3 and pip3 installed, and then you can use pip3 to install Flask. Once you have those dependencies installed, you can run the application using Python 3 app.py. And then navigate to your browser localhost 5000 to see your application running. When you go back to your terminal, take note of the logs that your application is writing to standard out. We created our Python application and we were able to run it locally using Python our host. But it would be great if we were able to include the Python dependencies inside of a Docker container. So that's what we're gonna do now. Create a Docker file in the same directory as your app.py file with the following contents. Let's break down this Docker file line by line. The first line from Python 3.6.1 Alpine is the starting point for your Docker file. Every Docker file that you create will have a from line that specifies the starting image where you're gonna build your custom layers on top of. Here we're using the official Python image. You can find more information about this image as well as information about other images in the Docker Hub or the Docker Store. In this case, we're using the Alpine version of Python, which means that it's based off an Alpine Linux distribution, which is significantly, significantly smaller than a standard distribution of Linux. A smaller image means that it's gonna download much better, faster, and it also has some security advantages because it provides us with a smaller attack surface. To create a secure Docker container, it's really important that you understand what's in your from image. Because of this, it's highly recommended that you're only using official images that are found in the Docker Hub or non-community images that are found in the Docker Store. Moving on to the second line in our Docker file, run pip install flask, we can use the run command in our Docker file to execute commands that are needed to set up our image for our application. So in this case, we're installing flask just like when we installed Flask to run this application locally. Our third line in our Docker file is the command python app.py. This line, command, is the command that is executed when we start our container. This is not to be confused with our second line, run. Run commands are executed at build time and are included as a part of the image. Command is our runtime. So this is when we start our application with Docker container run, this is the process that will be started. The last line of Docker file is copy app.py to app.py. This is copying our app.py file in our local directory into the, a new layer of the image. The order of the lines in our Docker file is very important. And that's because Docker images are built using layers and the Docker engine is smart enough to cache layers that haven't changed with subsequent builds and pushes. So when you look at the lines in the Docker file, each line is built on the layers based on the lines previous to it. So in general, you, the best practice is to put the lines that change the most frequently near the end of the Docker file. A very common pattern is to put the line where you're adding source code or you're changing source code as the last line of the Docker file 
since for most applications, this is going to be the line that changes the most frequently. So for us, that's the practice that we're implementing here. We're copying our source code, app.py, as our last line in our Docker file. That way, when we update it, as we will later in this lab, we will see that we're only rebuilding and repushing the last layer of this Docker image. Now that we have our Docker file defined, let's use the Docker image build command to build our Docker image. Don't forget the period at the end of the command, which indicates that we're building the Docker file located in, in the current directory. Once that command is finished, you can use the command docker image ls to verify the image has been built successfully. In this case, we see the Python hello world image, which you just created. And you can also note that we also have the base Python image in here as well. Now that we've successfully built our Docker image, we can run our Docker image using the Docker container run command. We'll pass in a port 5001 mapped to 5000 inside of the container. We'll pass dash D for detached, and then we'll specify the name of our image. Once this is running, we can go back to our browser and navigate to localhost 5001 to check to see that it's running. If you go back to the terminal, you can print the logs that are printed inside of the container by using the docker container logs command on the container ID that was outputted from the previous command. You can note that the logs printed out here were the same logs that we saw when we ran this Python application directly on our host without using docker. Our next step will be to push this image to docker hub where we can access it from other environments. In your browser, navigate to the Docker Hub website and create an account if you haven't already. Now, back on your terminal, run Docker login to log in using your Docker Hub credentials. One thing that we need to do to enable us to push our image to Docker Hub is that we need to re-tag our image to include our Docker Hub username. This can be done with the Docker image tag command. Now that our image is properly named, we can use the docker image push command to push our image to docker hub. And once that push is completed, we can go back to our browser, go to docker hub, use your credentials to log in, and go to your profile page, and if you search for Python, you should see the Python image that you just created, push to your account. Great. So we now have our image on Docker Hub, and we can go to any environment that has access to Docker Hub and do a Docker pull in our image name and deploy that container. Now let's simulate a change. Let's go into our app.py file and edit our source code. Let's change hello world to hello beautiful world. So now that we've changed our source file, let's run docker image build to rebuild our image. Remember to include your docker hub username in, uh, as a part of the image name, like we did before, otherwise you're gonna have to run docker tag. Note that when we run docker image build, there's some lines here that say using cache. This is because we're only editing the last line of the file, so step four, where we're copying the app.py, that's the only line that changes. Every other line, we can reuse the layers that have already been built, um, which saves us time when we rebuild our image. So now that we have our image built, we can run do docker container run. Uh, we'll do 5002 to avoid a port conflict with the other container that we still have running and then specify our, the name of our image. When this is running, we can go to localhost 5002 inside of our browser and see the changes of our new image. And it should say, hello, beautiful world. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to push our image to the Docker Hub so that other environments can pull down and 
redeploy a new application with these changes. So we can use the docker image push command or the docker push command. And you just like when we built the image, you can see here that there's a lot of lines that say layer already exists with only a single line that says pushed. This is because again, you know, these layers, layers one, two, three of this image, including and all of the base images for Python, all the layers included in the Python image as well, are already included and built and available on the Docker Hub. And we only need to push the delta, which is basic, which is just that last line, um, copy app.py. That concludes lab two, adding value with custom Docker images. Before we move on to the next lab, let's clean up our current environment. Do Docker container ls to print out the list of running containers, and do Docker container stop with each container ID for each running container. Once that is done, do Docker system prune to remove any stopped containers and other unused resources.